Welcome back to San Francisco at the 2015 Dad 2 Summit. It is lunchtime on day one and here at the Esquire Live Lounge. I'm Jason Kravitz from Lords of the Playground. I've switched from coffee to water. I think it was a good move. And I am here with Brent who uh, blogs at Designer Daddy. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep. This is uh, Brent and uh, we were just, we actually got started talking a little bit before uh, the camera started rolling. You were telling me that uh, you are a graphic designer by trade. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still a graphic designer by yeah, trade. I've been myself for about 12 years. Okay, and you have how many kids? I have a, a five-year-old son. A five-year-old son, and his name, can we share names? It's John. Mm -hmm. It's John, that's great. And uh, where do you where do you hail out of? Uh, we live in Kensington, Maryland, outside of D.C. I'm not going to get into the old home book. We're going to have to talk about that another time. Um, <laughs> but uh, Brent, you were saying that uh, you also um, have a relationship with refrigerator magnets. Yeah, How I, uh, did that come about? Well, I, um, I love all things retro and um, kind of came up with the idea for the masthead for my blog. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, we have a huge collection of fridge magnets and salt and pepper shakers. In fact, my first set I ever bought was in of Alcatraz. Right. But, um, as a as a gay dad, one of the things I started blogging about was when they started legalizing same-sex marriage. And right. being in D.C., that was a great place to be for that. Yeah. But then as all the individual states started happening, I started like just doing like throwing up a quick blog, putting a magnet on the fridge from that state, and writing about it. What I knew about the state or what circumstances surrounded this particular mm -hmm. legislation. Uh, but then readers started getting involved, and people started sending me magnets or sending me pictures of their magnets. Um, so it's been a fun way to document it, and um, we're getting closer to being done all the time. So. I know, right? Yeah. The map is getting closer to completion. Come on. Yeah. Um, I used to live in Texas, so I was like, come on, Texas, I've got magnets for you. <laughs> They're all ready to go. Yeah. Just got to get them up on the pride of place on the fridge. Uh, well, that's really cool. And do you have uh, a very specific um, uh, uh, message with your blog? I mean, do you talk about specific things, or you just generally talk about fatherhood? Yeah, I mean... I was talking about this with somebody else. Like, um, I think if if all of, if I only talked about um, being a gay dad or things related to that, I'd get really bored mm -hmm. with myself. Yeah. Um, but uh, that definitely plays into it. But it really, it's a lot about just being a father. I like to. Um, I have, you know, as a designer, I'm very attention deficit disorder or whatever. I'm always need something new and shiny. So I switch a lot from writing really personal stories to really funny stories to um, I made a set of um, Valentine's inspired my movies. Um, and uh, So the design know. elements to what you're yeah. talking about yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, and does it all relate to fatherhood or do you just go off the... Yeah. Um, it all relates to fatherhood. Um, sometimes it's a little bit related to uh, just LGBT community in general, but it's usually try to ties back to uh, parenting and how, how we're represented there. And, um, and I got to do a, a campaign for Barilla Pasta. They hired some LGBT parent bloggers to kind of help rehab their image in the States. and That's right, they had that uh, issue the, over in Italy, did they not? The, yeah, their CEO. Yes, yeah, said some yeah. dumb things. And, and it was specifically about gay parents. Right, um, right, right. And, but that was a really cool opportunity because they were, the, the American branch of the company was specifically looking for right. um, LGBT parents to do that. And, uh, and that, you know, they gave me carte blanche to say whatever I wanted. And Now obviously with, with gay parenting, uh, being a gay parent, I shouldn't say there's such a thing as gay parenting, but being a gay parent uh, was a huge part of the, has been a huge part of the marriage debate because they're talking about like, can, uh, you know, children raised by gay parents and is it going to be any different? And as gay marriage has become more and more, uh, you know, looked at as a regular thing, mm -hmm. as just marriage, uh, has pa gay parenting as a gay man followed suit? Has it become more like, that's a normal thing or is it still stigmatized in, in many quarters? Um, you know, I think I think in a lot of these states where the where the the courts are kind of jumping on board, there's still a lot of people uh, in those states that don't support it. Um, even in my state of Maryland, it took several tries yeah. to legalize it, um, and it was a close vote. And so it's it's still there's still some hearts and minds to be changed along the way. But it's, it's definitely a change. I mean, I um I know when I when we started trying to become dads, we had, we knew a couple people we could talk to, but there was nothing. There's no online groups. There were no. Uh, we didn't have a lot of people we knew. Um, but now it's. I think it's kind of become more a part of the story for a lot of people. Like right. it was never dreamed of as a, and when I was uh, growing up and knew I was gay and. Um, 
It's like, I hope I meet somebody I like. And I'd, I'd like, I'd love to be a dad, but I didn't know how that was going to happen. Right. Um, but now I think it's, it's just a, a, big, a greater possibility for Well, as marriage has become less stigmatized, is, I guess my question is, is, is fatherhood or parenthood for gay couples lagging behind in acceptance to marriage? Or do you think it's kind of like going along with it once people accept gay marriage, they accept gay parenthood? Well, I think that, um, I know for me personally, um, bringing a kid into the into the into the mix really softens a lot of people up. I mean, it kind of gives them something to focus on besides, oh, these two guys are right. having to sleep in the same bed. Um, but it's like, you know, I, th I think it actually, I think it actually helps the cause yeah. more than anything. You know, it helps normalize this, but also. You know, puts us on equal footing of like this all, we struggle with all the same things. Maybe we don't have the gender issues of you know, which does the man or the woman do the housework right, or whatever. Gender roles, but it's still it there. still all has to get done by somebody. Right, exactly. And uh, it's more fluid, but it's still a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, you know, we were talking earlier with the guys from uh, the At Home Dad Network, and we were talking about the stigmatization of of uh, you know being a primary caregiver as a father. Well, you don't have much of a choice, and right. somebody's <laughs> there's going to be a man doing some. Oh, all the work somewhere along the line. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's just an interesting, another version of that kind of like uh, uh, new, the new world of fatherhood in a way. Yeah, and, and it's fun, I mean, because I've gotten to write some things from a humorous standpoint. I find all, humor is also pretty disarming. Yeah. You know, like seven queerest questions I've been asked as a gay dad. Um, and kind of helps disarm people. And Give me an example. Of, what's, a, what's one of the um, oddest things you've been asked as a, as a gay dad? Well, you know, we've been jokingly asked if we, who, which one of you breastfeeds, you know. And my answer was, well, we've taken turns, but our son didn't like getting all the hair in his mouth. You know? um, and then there's some hard ones, like kids in my son's class will say, you know, where's his dad, where's his mommy? And another kid will pipe and say, oh, his mommy's dad. I'm like, no, he's not. No, that's uh, no. So, interesting. Uh, but it's, you know. Yeah. My, my younger sister is black and she was adopted when I was very, I was like four years old. And she was a primary school teacher. And I went to visit her once and she says, this is my brother. And these first graders didn't know what to say. And one of them says, why is he white and you're brown? And this other kid goes, duh, he's adopted. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Kids have the most interesting ways of looking at things. They don't have all the stigmatism. It's, you know, it must be much more interesting having a five-year-old in this day and age. You know, some of the best compliments I've heard have been hearing overhearing kids talk. Um, like I even heard one of my nephews once say, "I wish we had two dads." It seems like a lot of fun. <laughs> No, no slack against my sister-in-law, but, you know, they were saying, like, that looks like a lot of fun. I'm sure. Well, Brent from designerdaddy.com, thank you for joining us at Esquire Live Lounge. Great to see you. Go get some lunch. Thank you. Oh, and sign our little uh, Esquire Live sure. Lounge thing. We'll, uh, we'll be back in a minute.